Thanks for joining us guys and welcome to the Power Platform in real life. We're happy to get you up to speed on the best practices to deploy Dynamics 365 solutions and configuration data between environments efficiently, dev to test to prod, or even more environments. We'll cover intermediate to advanced topics here, but even if you are a beginner, you're going to be fine pretty fast. Hope this helps in your next deployment. We'll focus on the theory first and then get the hands dirty building it on the next videos. So first things first, dev environments are unmanaged and any other environment is managed. Developers are working in dev and customized components are contained within solutions. It's usually a good idea to have those solutions segmented. Let's say the solutions you see on the screen are the solutions that we're gonna deploy between environments. Any other solution that contains in dev is just for development purposes. Most common scenario from here, we export from dev and import to test and prod. The challenge with this is that you have to rely on a golden environment for all your customizations and for your deployments. If that golden environment gets screwed up either today or in the long run, we wish you a very good luck to fix the problem. So we'll use Azure DevOps repositories and pipelines. And we'll create a build pipeline. When it runs, the pipeline will export each one of the selected solutions as managed and store them as a pipeline run artifact. The pipeline will also export each one of the selected solutions as unmanaged and commit them to the develop branch in our Azure repositories. At this point, this is how your repository looks like. There is one folder for each of the exported solutions. The pipeline can also export data from your environment. In order to do that, we can create a schema file from the configuration migration tool and store that in the repository. The pipeline run will use the schema file, export the data, and store the extracted data in the repository. What if we need to make changes in a solution? We do it and run the pipeline again. Every time there is a pipeline run, there is a build number. All solutions that are part of the pipeline run will have their version updated to the same pipeline run build number. But what if we change multiple solutions? We do it and run the pipeline again. And again. The last step is to create a pull request to merge the code to another branch. At this point, as an option, you can use branching policies and request approvers to approve your merge before it actually gets merged to the new branch. This is our build pipeline, a consistent and repeatable way to export managed and unmanaged solutions and data to our source control. Just as a note, when it comes to the branching strategies, you can use whatever works best to your organization. What we're showing here is just one way of doing it. The way we do is by following the git flow approach. Whatever is in the main branch is in production. So let's say we have a release one already deployed to production. Branch it off from the main, the developer branch is created right away. When release you start, we branch off from develop to temporary branches. You can call those user story branches, bug branches, uh, solution export branches, whatever you prefer. But once we get those changes done, we're going to create a PR to commit those changes to the develop branch. By the way, depending on the size of your operation, you may want to have a Dynamics 365 environment for those user stories, or not. Some projects work directly in the dev environment, others may have different environments for that. It's your choice. When we're ready, we create a PR to the release branch, where the QA folks are gonna do some testing, and if they find bugs, we'll branch it off. Once it's fixed, we create a PR to dev, and create a PR to release. Bugs found in dev are branched off to the debugging branch, and then we get a PR to develop and a PR to release, same as before. When the test is accepted and ready to go, we create a PR to prod and voila, we deploy. Oh my God, what if we have a production issue? For those exceptional scenarios, we should branch off from main and then PR back to main and to develop. You want to avoid committing back to main directly. Those should be very exceptional scenarios. As a note, we should always have a production-like environment ready for production fixes. Despite the fact that this is the way that we've done for this particular project, keep in mind that there are multiple ways of having your branching strategies. Make sure you discuss with your team and come with an agreement on how to do it. Like this one, for example, from our good friend Tryonitoy, which is a different branching strategy where your main branch is actually where your developers are working. And there are tons of other ways of doing it. Your call. 
Back to our process, if your build number is number 4, chances are your target branch was already updated with the run number 3. If not, then you have to include all the necessary solutions in your run. Once the PR gets approved, the merge between source and target branch will happen. Assuming that the run number 3 was successful, the test environment should actually have the solutions with the version number 3. Merging to release is a very important trigger for us. We'll trigger the release pipeline. The release pipeline will go grab the artifacts from the build number 4 and deploy those managed solutions to the target environment. And that's it. That's our release pipeline. In case we were deploying data, instead of grabbing the artifacts, the release pipeline would grab the data from the branch. Now the same process repeats itself for the main branch. Once it's approved, it deploys to production. 